Now, I would like to take this privilege to introduce our guest of honor, Dr. Abhijit Mitra, Director, Indian Council of Agricultural Research. Dr. Abhijit Mitra is presently serving as Director of ICAR, Central Institute of Research on Cattle, Uttar Pradesh. Before taking over this present position, he, was, he has served as Director of ICAR National Research Center on Mithun Nagaland from 2015 to 2020, and in ICAR Indian Veterinary Research Institute, Izat Nagar, in the capacity of ICAR National Fellow 2011 to 2015, Principal Scientist 2009 to 2015, and Senior Scientist 2001 to 2011, and in ICAR NDRI Colonel as Scientist in 1995 to 2001. Dr. Mitra has demonstrated leadership acumen as a research manager and administrator. As a director of ICAR NRC on Mithun, he has launched several new research and development initiatives. He has also been instructed, he has also been instrumental in popularizing scientific Mithun rearing in Northeastern Hilly States. Dr. Mitra has the distinction of receiving several awards, including ICAR Team Research Award as a team leader, DST Boys Cast Fellow, DST SERC Visiting Fellow, and DAAD Germany Fellow. He has been bestowed with distinguished fellowships of noted academicians and professional societies and has also been the life member of many prestigious professional societies, namely Indian Dairy Associations, Associations for Promotion of DNA Fingerprinting and Associated Technologies, Indian Association of Veterinary Microbiology and Immunology, Society of Biological Chemists. And also he has been one of the Academic Council member of our St. Joseph University and his contribution was tremendous. Sir, we are extremely delighted, honored, and grateful for your presence in our program. With that, I would like to give this time to our guest of honor, Dr. Abhijit Mitra, for his address. Over to you, sir. Thank you uh, for giving a very nice introduction to me. Very warm good morning to all of you. Uh, from far, almost 1,200 kilometers away from Nagaland. Uh, most uh, Reverend Father Chancellor Arul Raji, Vice Chancellor Dr. Ganaduraiji, Registrar, other dignitaries, fathers and sisters, faculty members, media persons, and more importantly, today's freshers the dear students and ladies and gentlemen. It is a great privilege for me to, and I feel humble to accept your invitation to be a part of this program because during my days in Nagaland, I had the opportunity to visit your university and being associated in some of your work. And it is a, one of the nicest place I ever visited in Nagaland. Well, it is a very difficult for a person like me uh, to give a address when such a star felt and dignitaries are present in the, in the occasion. But as a student, still I consider me as, a, I would like to tell you a few things and I'll share three stories. Before that, I'll spend a little bit time for remembering my days in Nagaland. You know, I, I, I spent almost five and a half years in Nagaland, right from 25th March 2015 till 28th September 2020. I must tell you, this is one of the beautiful places I ever visited. And the people over there were so warm, so simple, and so God-fearing 
that I have learned many new things which I would not have learned had I not visited this part of the world. So thank you. I would like to take this occasion to express my sincere thanks and gratitude to all those people who have enriched my education, my learning, my experience, and made this memory very beautiful and, and cherishable. Well, students, you know, I will just narrate three stories. And many stories would be, maybe you know uh, by reading here and there. One story always I remember, it is a story of a butterfly and a little kid. Today, all of you are the freshers are entering into a place or a university where you are starting a new journey. And I'm sure you have your own dream, you have your own goal, and you have your own expectation. And one of the expectation would be for the student that my teachers, my faculty members, my seniors should hold my hand so tight so that I can make my journey very easy. But I will try to be just opposite side. I will try to say it is always better if my teachers doesn't hold my hand so tight. They should be guiding factor, but they may not hold our hand so tight. Why it is so? This story of butterfly and little kid is like that. One little girl, boy found a pupa which is about to deliver a beautiful, you know, uh, butterfly. He collected the caterpillar from the forest, kept it, fed that caterpillar with uh, leaves every day. Then one day that caterpillar stopped eating. It formed a pupa. He was waiting and waiting. And then one day suddenly he found that pupa, there is something coming out of pupa. His mother was not at home. So he took a scissor and make a big opening in the pupa. And he found that cat butterfly came out. He kept on waiting, but butterfly could not fly. And it died after some time. The moral of the story is, you know, when the pupa butterfly comes out of a pupa, it has to struggle a lot. And the struggle allows that all the fluids which accumulated in the veins of the wing, it will come into the body, so wings become lighter, so that butterfly is able to fly. So many times when you get an undue help or undue support, we become crippled, we become less enabled. So it is better not to have a lot of help, rather our health should be such that it should guide us to the further. Then I would like to tell you the two more stories. You know, many of you might be studying, will be entering into a science, engineering, education. So here you have your own discipline. But look around, you will be find, you will find that there are many people who have not studied, studied a particular discipline, but they have delivered something else beyond their subject discipline. I'm sure that you know the name of Dunlop. Dunlop, when you say that you, it comes to our mind, a tire, right? John Boyd Dunlop, who was a discoverer of pneumatic tire, he actually discovered this tire from, for his young kid as a cycle tire. That time he didn't know that already one application was pending, but he discovered that tire and slowly it into a car company and Dunlop becomes so famous. But point which I'd like to make is, you know, who is this John Boyd uh, Dunlop? He was not a physicist. He was not a chemist. He was not an engineer. He was a veterinarian by profession. He was a veterinary surgeon. Being a veterinary surgeon, he could discover a tire. And you see, you all of us, we know him by his name. So which tells us that not necessarily we need to discover or invent something from our own field of study. We can think out of box. We can do something 
which is beyond which we have studied in our textbook, in our colleges, in our university. Second story I would like to remind you, you know, I'm a, I'm a student of genetics. Uh, we call that Gregor Juan Mendel is the father of modern genetics. He, he was a priest in a church, Catholic church. He was doing some experiment with the peas and he came out with this all experiment. He presented his study and nobody accepted it. Even the church was, authorities told him, you better concentrate on what you were supposed to do instead of doing all those funky experiments with the peas. And after a hundred years after his death, his papers were reinvented and he was declared as a father of modern geneticists. And you know, Charles Darwin said later, had I known his paper, I would have accepted him in a, in a great deal. So he was known as a failure of obscure. So why I'm telling these two stories, many a time what happens, we do something in our life but we don't get our recognition and success in our lifetime. But I, I, I believe, and, I, and you must also believe, any good work, any, 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 any good, good work, whether it is a science, humanities, services, anywhere, it will be recognized and it has to be recognized. And, and you know, as, as you cannot keep the fragrance of a flower away from, bees, same way the fragrance of your work will never be unnoticed. And again, this is a story of Gregor Juar Mandu, who was a priest and he was not a scientist. And he, he created a whole science of modern geneticists on which today's field is uh, lying on. And we, we call him a father of genetics. Finally, you know, I will, I will end my, this uh, talk will referring some of my favorite quote of Swami Vivekananda, what he think about education and, 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 and what should be our education per se. According to him, education is not the amount of information that we put into our brain and which runs right there, undigested all of your life. We must have the building, we must have life building, man-making, character-making, assimilation of ideas. And if you have assimilated five ideas and made them your life and character, you have more education than any man who has got by heart a whole library. You know, so idea is enjoy your life. Do whatever you do, but do it at the best possible way. And Build your life. You know, I was I was going through going through the emblem of uh, university, Saint Joseph University. So nice. It says fully human and fully alive. What else? You live your life fully. Enjoy it. Be near to the God. Assimilate the ideas, and 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 enrich yourself. And finally, set yourself to the task of spreading the education among the masses. That is one thing we must do and tell them and make them understand, quote, you are our brothers, a part of parcel of our bodies, and we love you and never hate you. And with this, thank you. Thank you very much. And I must thank, express my sincere gratitude and thank the administration of St. Joseph University to giving this opportunity to share a few of my thoughts and God bless. And I wish a very bright, and very meaningful future for all those pressures. And one piece of advice, be, stay hungry and stay idiot. If you can stay a little bit of idiotic in your life, you learn more than becoming, trying to be very intelligent. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your words of motivation and for sharing your profound knowledge and experiences with us and encouraging our students with your kind words. Thank you, sir.